Evening Wealth Makers, I am here on my own and I'm not too surprised at that because I've been rushing around today to get ready for an amazing trip to France, which I'm looking forward to. And I only let you know five minutes before we're about to start. I only sent a reminder then of our Thursday evening trainings. So tonight we are with Eric Worry. We are looking at after we followed up and after somebody has made a decision that this is going to be a great opportunity for them is to join um, us with Lifestyle Galaxy and go Bitcoin mining. How do we help our new member so that they can be really good at business building? So let's listen to the pro and uh, see you out here afterwards. Chapter nine, skill number six, helping your new distributor get started right. In network marketing, people invest enormous effort, time, and money into getting people signed up and then squander that investment by leaving their new distributors to figure everything out for themselves. Professionals don't do that. They set proper expectations, they help get some quick results, and then continue to guide the new distributor through the many phases of our profession. I was lucky enough to have an early mentor, Michael Nelson, who was very skilled at guiding new distributors. Michael wasn't in my upline, but he was clearly the leader in my city. In addition, he had a lot of experience in our profession. So I listened to what he said, I watched what he did, and I asked him tons of questions. Back in those days, he had a small office close to my home, and I was always hanging around trying to learn something. Michael was a very successful recruiter. He was always bringing on new people. And for the most part, Michael's people did well in the business. That wasn't happening for me. The few people I recruited did nothing. As I watched Michael, I noticed that every time he signed up a new distributor, he scheduled what he called a game plan interview. I decided to model what he did. So the next time he met with a new distributor, I sat behind them close enough to take notes on their conversation. I did this several times and was surprised to learn he went through the same exact interview every time. I thought if I could learn that interview process, then I'd have a chance at his results. Game plan interview, part one. He validated their decision to become a distributor. He said things like, congratulations on making the decision. I'm proud of you for taking charge of your life. From now on, things are gonna be different for you and your family. It always took less than five minutes, but by the end of their discussion, any doubt they may have had about becoming a distributor was gone. They felt great. Game plan interview, part two. He set their expectations. He knew most people came into our business with unrealistic expectations, so he always said the same three things. If you succeed in this business, it's gonna be you who creates that success, not me. And if you fail in this business, it's gonna be you who creates that failure, not me. You're gonna be the difference between success and failure. I'm here to guide you every step of the way, but I can't do it for you. I'm here to work with you, but not for you. Wow, this was a radical concept and so different from the conversations I had when I got a person started. I said things like, I get paid from what you produce, so essentially I work for you. Well, what kind of expectation do you think that set in the new distributor's mind? I'd also say, we are going to build a business together. But that wasn't really true. They needed to build a business. I could be a resource, but I couldn't do it for them. The next thing he said was, my job is to help you become independent from me as quickly as possible. Do you agree that that's a good goal? Again, this was radical, but it made sense. Up to that point, I had a group that was extremely dependent on me. They only did something when I pushed, but Michael had a group that produced on their own without his constant help. He had duplication and freedom, I didn't. This set the relationship up so Michael would be the teacher for his group and not the slave. He could show them the skills and then they could independently build from that point forward. The third thing he said was, there will certainly be ups and downs as you build your business. There'll be good times and bad times. I'll know when you're in one of the bad times, when you aren't calling me, you aren't showing up for meetings, you aren't on the calls, if I start hearing excuses, that sort of thing. When that happens with you and it happens with everyone, how do you want me to handle that? Do you want me to leave you alone or do you want me to be persistent and remind you why you made this decision in the first place? This was brilliant because it's true. 
that everyone will have times of self-doubt. He let them know it was natural, and at the same time, set up the relationship so he was in a position to turn them around when it happened. What Michael accomplished with these three concepts was so different from promising the world like I was doing, that it was night and day. With my approach, the distributor would sit back and wait for me to perform. And if I was ever too busy or couldn't help for some reason, I became the easy excuse for why things weren't working out. With Michael's approach, his people became independent quickly. He would coach them from time to time, but he wouldn't allow his group to use him as an excuse for their lack of results. While my distributors struggled, his flourished. Game plan interview, part three. Michael went through a getting started checklist to help the new person have the best chance for success. The exact plan would be different for every company, but the concept was to do everything possible to get quick results. Here are some examples of what you could include in your getting started checklist. One, make sure your new distributor is set up with appropriate products. Just about every company has products that can be personally used by the distributor. So make sure your new person is doing that. Depending on your company, this may include a monthly commitment. It's very important that people develop an emotional attachment to the products, and that can only happen if they are using them and enjoying the benefits. In addition, many companies have products that can be sampled or used in demonstrations. In that case, new distributors should have an appropriate supply so they're properly prepared. Two, make sure your new distributor is set up with appropriate tools. We've talked about the importance of third-party tools in building a large and successful network marketing business. Your new distributor needs to be prepared to help their prospects with the tools that will professionally take them through the exposure process. Three, make sure your new distributor gets connected. Show them how to find things on the company website, where the upcoming events are being held, when the leadership calls or webinars are being conducted, etc. Remember, our goal is to help them become independent as quickly as possible. This is an important step in making that goal a reality. Four, make sure your new distributor has a basic understanding of the compensation plan. They don't need to know it in detail at the beginning, but they should at least understand the key points and what will happen financially as they move through the first few levels. Five, make sure your new distributor has a fundamental understanding of how to properly invite their prospects to understand more about what they have to offer. You can save them from running out there and talking their heads off with little or no results by giving them a brief overview of how and why a professional invitation process works. Game plan interview, part four. Michael helped the new distributor create a game plan to get through the first few ranks and challenge them to do it quickly. He understood and helped me to understand that it was a race to help a person get results quickly. If they received early positive reinforcement, they continued. And if they didn't, they had a tendency to fade away. Every company is different, so this game plan will also be different. But think about the simple actions you can encourage people to take during the first week to get the best possible results. How can they get their first customer? How can they get their first distributor? Can you encourage them to attend their first company event? What steps can you take to help them earn their first commission check? Success in network marketing wasn't real for me until I earned that first check. When it arrived, everything changed for me. I started to really dream about creating a better life for myself and my family. Helping your new person get off to a quick start is vital. Game plan interview, part five. Michael always ended by giving some specific assignments. One thing I've learned is new distributors crave direction, and they respond incredibly well to simple assignments. Michael always ended by giving those assignments along with a deadline for them to be completed. He told his new distributor to get back to him by a specific date. It's just like the exposure prospecting process. You go from exposure to exposure, but it doesn't end until they become distributors. Professionals continue to go from exposure to exposure, assignment to assignment. The purpose of all this is to help the new distributor get over the line. When someone gets started, there's always a line between success and failure. On one side of the line, it's easier to quit than continue. On the other side of the line, it's easier to continue than to quit. What can help a person get over the line? Signing up their first customer, signing up their first distributor, getting their first commission check, attending a big company event, making friends inside the organization, proclaiming their intentions to the world, getting promoted to a new level, being recognized for some sort of achievement. There are hundreds of other things that can contribute to a person getting over the line. As a sponsor, your job is to help them get over the line and stay over the line. And the line never really goes away. It's always there. And you as a leader, need to be constantly aware of where your people are emotionally. 
This way you can continue to encourage them to never let go of their dreams. Okay, in a short 10 minutes, I think we got an amazing amount from that. So I think um, Eric Worre is really, really, uh, it's so true that we spend so much time, you know, if you think about somebody who eventually decides to join the company and you actually had six to eight conversations with them and then you've spent all that energy and now uh, you just let them be like a baby, not knowing how to change its own nappies, not knowing how to um, eat or drink and just leaving them to flounder in terms of how to get going in their businesses. So really great to have a strategy in that department. Um, so the first thing he talks is about a five, five point getting started plan. So the first one is to validate their decision. Make appointment, get together with them and say, hey, well done. You're going to really change your life. You're taking responsibility for your life. Let's make this happen. And I'm going to show you some steps that we can make that possible. And then, and then talking about step two, setting the expectations. So he does that in a couple of areas. First of all, he says, if you succeed or fail, it'll be you. You are the person who's going to make the difference. I'm here to support you, work with you. I can do that if you pitch. If you don't pitch, that's a bit challenging. Um, but yeah, I'm here to work with you, but not for you. And then making it very clear that the job of the mentor is to help the new person become independent, become capable, become skillful, and feel confident. And then a very important um, aspect that very few of us address right up front when we're building, in, building a team and helping other people build their team is dealing with the ups and downs, especially the downs. So setting up front, what, what do I do when you're having a downtime? You don't pitch, I don't hear from you, there's a lot of excuses, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to just leave you alone? Or do you want me to uh, follow up, remind you of why you did this, remind you of your value, um, remind you of how to get through this tough stage? What do, you, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to approach you? And then the third step um, is helping the person with a checklist, okay, of, of um, first steps. So first of all, getting them to be using the product. So with us, it's uh, getting people to be retail mining, getting them to join the company, getting them to go join the company and go wholesale mining, um, get them to get emotionally involved, get them on the inside. Um, of the company to, to really see and experience the value of what we're doing. And then uh, to give them the tools. How do they actually um, invite somebody? How do they know who to invite? Um, what do they give to them when they've invited them to take a look at what they're up to and the benefits of Bitcoin mining? So in our company, there are two particular tools you could use. One is the username.mylifestylegalaxy.com. If you're not a part of the training group, you're welcome to use my username, I am very wealthy. So it would be I am very wealthy.mylifestylegalaxy.com, which leads to five short videos. The first one being about the top uh, gurus in the financial world talking about the value of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, and then they submit their name and an email address to get access to videos about our particular company and how we do things. So that's a very valuable tool. The other one is four older videos that still are very useful as a starting point if you don't have access to Wi-Fi or your prospect doesn't have access to Wi-Fi and they need to have a look at something. So we've got those two tools. And then the third thing is, um, what was the other thing that he said? Okay, how to invite. And then fourthly, he gets you to actually, he gets 
the prospect to actually set a goal for that week. Well, he sets a goal, obviously being the one with more experience, he sets a goal and assignment to achieve in the next uh, couple of days to a week and then ask for accountability by setting up an appointment to say, okay, I'm going to check in on you and find out how you've done. If you've finished that and you're eager to go for, the, for another um, assignment, another task, another stage, because new people really like to be uh, walked side by side, take their arm, and they really need to have some direction. So I think those are very, very helpful um, explanations about how to get somebody new started in your, in your business. I hope that's been as inspiring for you as it has for me. And I look forward to seeing you back online next week. Bye for now. Be equipped. Love your greatness and have a great week. Bye for now.